Bertrand paradox. Last time we saw the Bertrand Nash equilibrium in which we said that uh, the Bertrand Nash equilibrium is going to come at a point where uh, if there are two firms, so the Bertrand Nash equilibrium is going to come at P1 equals to P2 equals to marginal cost. And no firm is going to make a profit, right? So this is what the paradox is, that even with such a small number of firms, just two firms, we are getting a perfectly competitive outcome. That's an idea, right? So please write two firms. Produce. Identical goods. Right. So the demand function of the ith firm would be what? If the ith firm is going to charge lesser than the jth firm, then the entire market will be coming to the ith firm. So the entire market demand is uh, going to be the ith firm's demand. Entire market is going towards, coming towards the ith firm. If both firms are going to charge the same price, then the ith firm is going to get half of the total demand, right? I could have written PI also here, it doesn't matter. So, but since PI is equal to PJ, it's like this. If ith firm is going to charge more than the jth firm, then the ith firm is going to get nothing. Nobody is going to buy from the ith firm. So what is it that we have said? We have said this, that the Nash equilibrium is where P1 is equal to P2 is equal to MC. Right. So, and when price, which the firms are going to charge, that is equal to the marginal cost, it means that the firms are not going to make any economic profit. Right. That is the product is selling at zero economic profit, right? So what does it mean that the solution to the Bertrand case and the solution to the perfect competition, it coincide. Because even in case of the perfect competition, the two firms or uh, uh, any of the firm is not going to make any profit, right, in the long run. This is also going to happen in case of the Bertrand competition, that the firms are not going to make any profit. It means Nash equilibrium. of the Bertrand model is the same as the perfectly competitive outcome. is the same as with the perfectly competitive outcome. So why it is paradoxical? What is the paradox in this? That only with two firms also, it is giving you the perfectly competitive outcome. It is giving you a zero economic profit outcome just with two firms also, right? Just with two firms also. So it is paradox. It is paradoxical. is paradoxical because the competition between just few firms, just with two firms also, it is going to give 
the the answer as the perfectly competitive outcome. The competition between as few as two forms would be so tough. It would be so tough, right? Why it is paradoxical. Tough means, I mean, nobody is going to make any profit, right? The other is that just, just that the number of the forms will go from one to two. So when the number of the forms were just one, so they were making monopoly profits. But the moment the number of forms, they will go to two, they are they have started making zero profits, right? So if the number of the firms goes from one to two, The price decreases from the monopoly price to the competitive price. and stays the same level as the number of firms increases further. As the number of firms increases further. But just think about it. I mean, this doesn't seem realistic, does it? I mean, we have seen the markets, right? I mean, empirically also you've seen this that just with two firms, I mean, both the firms are going to make positive economic profits, no? So it doesn't seem realistic. And they will be charging the price which is more than the marginal cost. They will be charging the price which is more than the marginal cost. So it is not very realistic. It is not very realistic as the markets featuring a small number of firms with market power typically charges a price which is more than the marginal cost charge a price exceeding the margin cost. So in most of the industries with just two firms, I mean, both firms are going to make positive economic profits. It's not that they will be making zero economic profits. But the good thing is that this Bertrand paradox, it can be avoided. It can be avoided in several situations if you're going to, if you're going to tweak the assumptions of the model a little bit. So Bertrand paradox,
can be avoided. by changing the assumptions of the model, right? So if we assume that the firms, they chose the quantity rather than the prices, that is they're going to play a Kurno instead of the Bertrand, there won't be any Bertrand paradox kind of situation. It's not that the firms are going to charge their marginal cost or they're going to make zero economic profits. No, not like that. So if we assume that the firms chose the quantity, rather than the prices, right? Then in such good no game, Firms do not end up charging marginal cost. And earning zero economic profits. and earning Zeno economic profits. The other case where uh, this Burton paradox could be avoided is in case if you have the capacity constraints. So capacity constraint is that up until now, what is it that we have assumed that I can sell unlimited amounts. Huh? So at a cost C. So in case if you're going to make a capacity constraint, then also we can avoid the Burton paradox. So if firms face capacity constraints, rather than being able to produce it's an unlimited amount at a cost C. The other way Bertrand paradox could be avoided is product differentiation. So instead of selling a completely homogeneous product, that's what we have assumed in case of the Bertrand competition, that instead of, instead of uh, assuming that the firms are selling a completely homogeneous product, so if you start assuming that the firms are selling the differentiated goods, then in those cases, yes, uh, you can avoid the Bertrand paradox because there you will not be charging just P1 equals to P2 equals to uh, MC. You'll be charging something above than this MC. If the products are 
are differentiated. rather than being perfect substitutes. Then also, you can avoid Bertrand patterns. Right. Or there is one another way of uh, avoiding the Bertrand paradox that if the firms are not going to play just a one-shot game. So if the firms are going to play a game which is going to be repeated, right? So if they are going to have an implicit collusion, right? Then uh, also this Burton paradox could be avoided. So if the firms play, a repeated game, which has you know, implicit collusion then also Burton paradox could be avoided rather than rather than one round of competition. So uh, what is it that we have learned in this? We have learned that what is a Burton paradox, right? And what are the ways of uh, avoiding the Burton paradox, right? Thank you, Vita.